Let's see, I think I had two more questions that, uh, one more question and then one, see what else you have to say. Um, I can't come to this meeting because I teach this time, however I believe Henry has to address faculty salaries. That is, when will he address our low faculty sal salaries compared to other universities? Also, he needs to address recruitment needs throughout the university. There are still departments that are not pulling their weight as far as bringing students in. Okay. Um, as to that latter part, I think the budget committee is looking at departments and programs that aren't pulling their weight. That's one of the things they're looking at to try to see if there are ways that they can pull their weight, or we may have to discontinue some programs. That's something that I think we need to let that committee process deal with. Um, I am aware of faculty salaries. We've looked at faculty salaries in other places, and we've looked at faculty teaching loads in other places. Our salaries aren't bad here. Our teaching loads, with respect to for students, are pretty good here compared to our uh, competitors. Um, our physical plan is pretty good compared to our competitors. Of course, I want to improve faculty salaries, and this is one thing I need some help from the deans with. I need you to help me identify people that will, that will help us fund, uh, fund some endowment to help, help with faculty salaries. And I think, I think we can do that. I think we can raise, raise some money to do that. Uh, I, I hear you. I would like, as Mary suggested earlier, I'd like to make these other restorations as soon as we can. I think if we had an additional 500 students, we might be able to get there. Uh, and, you know, I'm doing everything I can uh, on, on recruitment as well as development. If you can, uh, I've got to figure out how to work smarter. I'm not satisfied with the job I'm doing. I am working hard, as are all of you. Uh, but I feel it, I want to help. Uh, and we will, we will look at salaries as soon as we can. Um, it is, salaries are constricted in a lot of places, and I think there are some marginal institutions that may go under in this paradigm shift. Not us. Uh, I've been very pleased. Our, we have a strong set of trustees. Our investment committee is fantastic. I will, I will say this. Um, our investment committee recently compared the performance of uh, a major firm in Washington, Goldman Sachs, with the Methodist Pension Board and the $16 billion that the Methodist Pension Board invests. Guess who won? Uh, maybe there is something in prayer. Uh, and the Methodist, now the Methodist Pension Board is, is doing the investing for the Oklahoma uh, Methodist Foundation. So, uh, and the person on the board of that is uh, Bob Long, who is also on our board of trustees. So there are some interesting things going on in investment. We have a tough audit committee. Um, we've encountered some, some problems. We, we're gonna have to cut back credit card usage and credit card numbers. Uh, the audit committee was pretty strict about this, and uh, I gave, of my credit card, really, it was a, it was a pleasure, um, and you know, if you've heard some of that, that's right. Uh, I was just on the phone with our chairman today, and he, he said, you know, the number of credit cards you have is ridiculous. Well, that's he ran a very, pretty tight business, which is why he's such a successful investor, and has given a lot of money here. And you know, uh, we do work for the board of directors. They do, they do run this place. And we have some some really good ones. Uh, anything else? Just had uh, some of you have noticed the folks that I brought to campus, and I try to bring really interesting people to campus because I value I value teaching and I value the intellectual enterprise. You know, we've had Gloria Steinem, we've had Jack Gibbons, my favorite uh, British pianist, we've had Brian Garner, the Editor of Black's Law Dictionary and the leading legal writer in the world. We had Bulan Adelaide, a Renaissance man, if there ever was one. We uh, hopefully we will have Kristen Chenoweth here. She's tentatively scheduled to be our uh, graduation speaker. And by the way, how many of you have read this? This book is a scream. 
It is an absolute strain. And it absolutely praises OCU to the heavens. Uh, it is just fantastic. I have asked, I, I fear that it's out of print, but I've asked Laura uh, Warren to see if she can get it for our bookstore. Oh, Krista Chillin, I'm sorry. A little bit wicked. Uh, no, I didn't get a signed copy, but hopefully I will. Uh, and uh, when uh, when Dean Parker and I were visiting Promises Promises a year and a half or so ago, Kristen Chen would say backstage, you know, sometime I'd like to come do a graduation at OCU. And I said, that can be arranged. And it, hopefully she will do that this year. She may do something else for us this year. But um, this is a fabulous book, so she's coming. Nabil Fahmy, the Egyptian ambassador, a huge figure in the re, uh, refiguring of modern Egypt. In Scott Monday, Sandra O'Connor, who will be back in April working on our civic literature, uh, uh, civic literacy. <laughs> Dr. Matt Mountain with the Hubble Telescope. Some of his lectures if you want, but he'll be here February 29th. And uh, that's going to be in Petrie unless we have to move it because we do have um, a lot of interest. This book is being sold. Good. So, any anything else for the good of the Lord? Um, the Gary Gutting piece that I shared with you. I hope you'll take some time to read it. I thought it was a beautiful exponent of what we believe here. The the, the liberal arts education that teaches us to know scientifically to understand humanistically, and to express ourselves artistically. I think that's a beautiful explication of what we do. We might also add that there's a moral component of it here. One of the questions I got was, it looks like we're just going after the student that's in at the moment, parentheses, nursing, and business. Let me tell you, as is intuitively obvious to the most casual observer, uh, our commitment to nursing and business is long-standing. We have rather significant buildings built housing those, those programs. And I am an absolute fan of both of those programs. And I think the liberal arts applies to nursing and business. Uh, I actually prefer nurse practitioners to physicians. Uh, as I've said, you can read their handwriting and they look concerned. <laughs> But also, I've gotten to spend a little time in the nursing school this year. They've been kind of let me come and talk to new, uh, new students that are entering. Uh, ours is different from Brand X. Uh, just go over and see it and feel it. We're not ashamed of certain values. We're not ashamed that, that we, we buy the brothers and sisters keepers deal. We buy it. We get it. Uh, these are things that we believe. These are not passing fancies. We need nurses. We need business types that understand the liberal arts, that understand, as, as I said a moment ago, how to know scientifically, how to understand humanistically, and how to express artistically. That's what we do here. I believe it passionately. I am dedicated to being here. I'm going to do my damnedest to try to move us to the next level, or maybe one beyond that. Uh, I will make mistakes, but I, I think I've got a good team together. I think you're seeing that. And it is, a, it is a concerned team, as are so many of you. I forgot to say a moment ago, somebody mentioned in the anonymous um, questions, adjunct salaries. I so appreciated that. I'm always worried about our adjunct salaries. And I thought it was really neat that a person mentioned it. I think we can do something on edge salaries. I've talked to Dean Parker and Provost Barber to try to look at some things that we can do there. Maybe we can put some other inputs in, the size of the class or the, the importance uh, of, of the subject, the seminar that's essential, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, we do listen. We, we actually get more suggestions from our suggestion box than we do from our computer, which I, I think is interesting. And so we're trying to be responsive, but we also believe uh, that we're a city on the hill. Not to use Reagan's phrase, I perhaps should use uh, Dante's uh, 
Dante's phrase, my kids, Rachel and Josh, my acting kids, just gave me my first graphic book. Have any of you seen this new graphic Dante's? It's a comic book, Dante's Divine Comedy. And uh, my daughter wrote something like, Dear Dad, as a reaffirmation of your parenting, this stands to show how much your children like hell cartoons and other immoral stuff. So, <laughs> Um, that's on my reading list now. Um, but some of you know when Dante goes down to the first circle, you know, he sees the, the sort of the temple of human wisdom, how far people can get with, with humanism. Well, at OCU we added something to that too. We add our Methodist heritage and so forth, uh, and so forth, which is an absolutely phenomenal heritage. One of the joys I have had has been giving some people, as you know, we've had some very significant people in the Muslim world here for reasons. Um, when Tariq Ramadan was here, one of Time Magazine's top ten intellectuals, uh, I had to be, I was delivering a lecture at New York University, but I was very pleased to send him, with the pages marked, the Methodist book of this one. that talks about how important interfaith discussion is in this world that we have now. So, let's believe in what we're doing. And let's work together to, to make it happen. Uh, there are going to be some new things. We're decentralizing a lot of stuff. You're going to have more opportunity to input, put your own inputs in. Um, but, but stay with us. Stay with you. Another thing we do, we, we have rewarded our uh, longtime adjunct faculty, our former full-time faculty, uh, that our adjunct sometimes get an extra stipend, I think. Is that not correct? It, it, well, it, we need to do that. We need to keep the Muslims around. Uh, not only because they know, they know stuff in their subject matter, but they know institutional history too. They can remind us of, of, of things. And you know, I, I look at some of these magnificent new buildings like Minders and like Juan de Vaz, uh, but you know, I think the people who built the Gold Star had every bit as much faith and had every bit as much difficulty building that building then as we do now. And so we do have to set our goals. Some of them will be high, but we'll set them and, and we, we can get there. This is a difficult time, no question about that. Um, but I think we can do some stuff. Our product is great. We just need to produce more of it. Questions, comments, rebuttals, criticism, great thoughts, stock tips, <laughs> philosophical aphorisms. <coughs> Who's in charge of this here meeting? You are. Christine, are you? Sure. Did, did you make cookies or anything? <laughs> Tea and water. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. <laughs>